How's it going everybody? Thank you for watching this video and just a quick note if you guys are subscribed or if you guys haven't subscribed yet make sure to subscribe and when you do click this little bell here on my channel and get all notifications sent to you from my channel that way you guys can be updated with all of my channel updates and uploads and whatever else I do on here. Thanks for watching. How's it going everyone? Welcome back to the source code. My name is Deshaun and today we're going to be going over how to make your own API. So this isn't really extremely difficult but I feel like it's something a lot of people don't do and shouldn't do or a lot of people don't do but should do. And obviously, once again, all the code will be available to you guys on GitHub. So if you guys are having trouble or you're not quite understanding what we're doing here, go over there and check it out. But so APIs are really good for coding something once and then not having to code it again. Uh, for instance, and this is pretty much in sort of honor of me creating a, uh, an API for our Minecraft server, which I will be announcing very soon. Um, I wanted to create an API that handles the messages, handles MySQL, handles creating configs, handles uh, the arenas and the game start, game stops. So that's what I have inside of that API. So we're not going to make it super complex here. We're not even going to put anything inside of our constructors, but we're just going to show you how you can you can do this. So the first thing we're just going to do is we're just going to say this uh, get server dot git plugin manager dot register events and we're just gonna say this this uh, we're just gonna throw all of our events right here on this class just to make things fairly easy so so let's just go ahead and say uh, event handler oops so no, sorry wrong class I'm doing this on wrong class so so in our API here, we have to do a couple of things here before we can before we can do what we're about to do. So we have to decide what we want to do in our API, right? So let's just make a new class here, and let's just call this, um, oh, I don't know. We'll just say game manager. So what we can do in this game manager now is, let's see, we're going to want to call uh, we might not need to call our main class, but let's just go ahead and say public void uh, game start. And this is going to take, uh, oh, I don't know, let's just say, let's just say it's going to take a player, um, an int, and uh, a location. So we'll just say that's what it, those are the parameters that we're going to use inside of here. Now I want you to realize that that with this you don't necessarily have to have these values be initialized um, in certain instances because so let me import player so int i will just say whoops so you don't have to have these values necessarily imported because you're going to use them you're not really setting them as anything inside of here because you don't want to particularly set them as anything inside your API unless of course in your API you do that like something like a config or for like a MySQL you want to set the uh, the values or uh, for instance in my source code API I have an arena manager obviously and um, when I create a new arena it adds to an array list um, through the getter and setter class of arena manager so something like that so let's just say game start then we got we'll do game stop and game player leave actually we'll just say game player join well I guess we can we can use both so we'll say game player leave and game player join so for this maybe we just want the player and for this maybe we just want um just the player again let's just let's just say we just want the player again so now that we have that what we can do is we can go in here to our main class <clears throat> and we can say public game manager game manager and now we can we don't have to, we don't have to import that and then in our on enable we can go ahead and say game manager equals new game manager that way it doesn't equal null and we're initializing it here 
So now what we can do, uh, we technically have an API ready to use, right? So what we can do is we can go ahead and export this. And we will just say tutorial API. So now if we go ahead and export this, we can go here to our, uh, let's just go to our loot chest plugin. So we can go here, right click, and go to properties. And we can absolutely, well, we don't want the source code API. I was testing around with that. So we can go ahead and export that and we can go to, we want the tutorial and we can go to plugins and then tutorial API. So let's just delete this obviously because that's the, not the right one we want. So what we can do in here is we can go ahead and say private tutorial API, API equals, and we'll just cast tutorial API equals bucket dot get server dot get plugin manager dot get plugin and we want it to be whatever we named it so we named it tutorial API pretty sure I named it like that so we'll go ahead and import this and now you can see we have our API there and now what we want to do is we go ahead and say at event handler we can go ahead and say public void um, on join and this will be a player oops player join event event and we can go ahead and import all that and then we can go ahead and just cast player player equals event dot get player and now we can go ahead and say well, let's import that we can say api dot game manager and now we can see we have all of our methods there so we have the game player join the game player leave the game start the game stop so we want the game player join and it's going to take a player but let's just go ahead and add something in here so that way we get something uh, at least when we join so we can go ahead and say player dot send message and we're going to say chat color dot yellow hey welcome to the server so you can do things like this where you can set the api um, you could even set make it a part of this api that recognizes what um plugin they're joining to or what mini game they're joining to or whatever you want and you can have it in the api that recognizes that and stores that and eclipse always uses the wrong chat color we want bucket so now if we go ahead and if we just re-export this api really quick export and we just refresh this here nothing's going to change here obviously because nothing's happening but now if we go ahead and if we export this and we'll just call this loot chest because that's what it is oh i hate that let's just delete that folder loop and now uh, let's open up minecraft here so we got this let's run the server as long as i did everything correctly in the con or the plugin.yml and everything this should work fine so let's see minecraft's launching there our server is launching okay so i will be back once this is all loaded okay so we're back here so if we go ahead and join the server now what we can see is hey welcome to the server and we did the all through our api and so like i said if you coded this once you would not have to do certain things every time you made a plugin so like i said this could be really good for if you're doing like arenas uh while well, if you're doing like a mini game or maybe you just have a a system that you want to use for your messages and you just want to use your messages api um or maybe you have a really great um command API that you want to use or a particle API um, but you want to make it yourself because you want it to be custom to you and your server so say in my API I wanted to handle like particle trails for cosmetics I could easily go ahead and put that in my API and then I could just simply do something like uh, API dot particles dot and I could start running something inside my particles class so I could you know do particles dot run or dot set 
and it could be, and I would just put put in an enum particle, or even just yeah, an enum particle, and then that would be it, and that would be super easy, and I would not have to code that over and over and over again. The only time I would have to maybe is if um, the version changes, and you know, some, you know, obvious obvious things like that. But so that is all I got for you guys today. Like I said, not a really hard concept, but something that I think everyone should utilize a lot more, because um, I find myself coding things over and over and over again, which if instead I just made an API, I could easily and I could quickly finish projects. Um, like I said, we're uh, I'm go we're going to be launching a Minecraft server soon for the source code, so definitely be on the lookout for that video. And the one thing that makes it really great is I'm coding this API, which is going to handle creating arenas. It's going to handle connecting to the MySQL. It's going to handle updating, inserting into and selecting from the MySQL database, but it's also going to handle configs and it's going to allow for each game to have its own config. So you know what, I actually want to show you guys something, I actually want to show you guys a little bit what I mean by this. So if we just go ahead in here, we'll go to these plugins, we'll grab these, <clears throat> and yes, Starfighters is a plugin that will be on the server, so be on the lookout for that. So let's go ahead and just reload here. So you can see their source code API dot has loaded or has loaded. So now if I go ahead and say create or not create Starfighter create, you can see there that I can do all this, and this is just through my API. That message there was sent through my source code API. I didn't set that in my Starfighters plugin. I set that in the API, and then I just called the method, uh, which. I Excuse me, I just burped. Which I called um, you know, the class was message manager, and that particular one was bad player. So it would send a player. If the message was bad, it will have this um, red hashtag here. But if we go ahead and say create, and we'll just say activated as true, arena is test, ID is one, minimum players is five, max is ten. You can see now that we have uh, another message here, which uh, is telling me that the arena was created and it's also telling me to remember the ID in case I need to make changes to it. All done through the API. Really, really easy. And then if I go ahead and do it again, you can see there now I have a request to overwrite this already existing arena. And what I can simply do there is I can just say, no, uh, well, N for no, but apparently I haven't fixed that part of the code yet. I would say N for no, and it would go ahead and it would fix this. So that is all I got for you guys today. Once again, thank you all so much for watching. You guys have been really awesome, super supportive of the channel. Um, we're going great. We're going. We're going to be going to some great places here. Uh, we already have. We already hit our 500 subscriber goal um, within a short with a short time, half a year, and it's just super awesome, guys. And again, I just can't thank you guys enough for all the support you guys have been giving the source code, uh, especially in our Discord link below in the description. Um, you guys have just been really, really awesome, and we just have an awesome community going here, and I'm really excited for what the future holds, but for now, adios.